Hello, Spark fans. Welcome back to Advancing Spark, where we're back in the world of data science today as we dig into the kind of new emerging world of LLM ops, LUM ops, whatever you want to call it, essentially applying everything we've been doing in ML ops to the world of large language models through ML flow and seeing how, how that hangs together. That's the plan for today. We'll be taking a look at what you can do through ML flow and essentially exploring the whole new emerging world of what you can do with LLMs. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new around here. Let us know down in the comments if you're currently actually trying to apply MLOps principles to your large language models. It is something people are only really just starting to do, and it's an interesting world. Now, I do need to let everyone know we do have this upcoming series of webinars with Databricks, the Ask Databricks series, and we're going to be sharing some information about that next week. So you'll be able to hear about what the different topics are, where you can come and sign up to it, where you can submit questions that we can ask with the various different product managers. So Ask Databricks coming very soon, and we'll talk more about it next week. All right, so we do have our resident data science expert with us. Hey, Gabby. Hi, Simon, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing very well. I'm excited. Good. good. I hope you're excited to talk about LLM Ops. Always, say... never excited to say it, but to talk about it, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say this as quick as you say it, because I'm sure I'll mess it up, but yeah. Quite excited to be here to talk about a new announcement in MLflow 2.4, all about evaluating large language models. Very cool. So what's, what is the announcement? What does it mean? What is right. LLMOps? Right. So LLMOps is all about, in, in similar fashion to where we have MLOps, where we evaluate machine learning models and operationalize machine learning models. This is all centered about on large language models. So the new announcement, what it does bring is a great feature in terms of evaluating large language models. And that could be models that we pull via hugging phase or large language models that we are talking via an API, for example, like your open AI um, uh, services that's out there. So that's, that's what it means. It's got a new kind of interface as well, which is quite cool. And we'll show you how to basically implement the new MLflow 2.4. And if you're wanting to evaluate large language models, how oh, you go about doing that. Very cool. All right. All sounds very, very good. Yep. One thing I'd like to mention is this blog's amazing. So there's lots of, um, in terms of why should we be doing large language models evaluation? And that's largely because tradition, with traditional machine learning, you don't really know how well your model is performing if you, don't, if you can't evaluate your model, right? Like using certain metrics. With large language models, you still have to do that to kind of pick which is your best model to score new data with, which is, which is your best model that's not hallucinating, if you like. You know, there's lots of different things that you need to evaluate as, as, a, as a user or if you're implementing it in your business to then make you make that decision in terms of, all right, I want large language model one but, uh, and not large language model two. And that's and that's tricky, right? You know, if you're going from traditional machine learning, you can you can you can objectively measure the accuracy. Yeah, that's you say, right. Based on the training data, this is this accurate? Is that accurate enough? Whereas now we're talking about is it a hallucination? That's subjective. That's someone reading it and going, is that true? Which is exactly. just a different approach to measuring accuracy, right? Yeah, and quite honestly, this field is rapidly developing. There's lots of different ideas in terms of how you should be really evaluating large language models. But this is certainly a first step in terms of, right, let, let's do a few things here and let's have a look at the outputs in terms of model one versus model two and what's our preference, what gives you the best results, most accurate results. And it's definitely, uh, in terms of direction, it's a step forward. All right, cool. How does it work? Right, cool. So if you're interested, have a read in the blog. There's also some code snippets in the blog that will kind of give you a few starting points in terms of how to get started. But what we've also done is how to play with it ourselves. And what we're going to do is just show you. So I've got this notebook here. And if you're wanting to get started with LLM Ops, then either user cluster, so 13.2 Databricks machine learning runtime, MLflow 2.4 comes readily pre-installed. Or if you're not using 13.2 uh, a Databricks machine learning runtime, then you can install it. You can install the MLflow 2.4 within your notebook or cluster. Cool. Yeah, it makes sense. So if anyone's wondering why they've not seen this, it's because you want an older runtime and they need to make sure they upgrade. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we've spoken a lot previously in our videos about Dolly. 
But what we're going to talk about today is open AI models and how do you leverage the open AI services using the GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 turbo models that's out there. Um, what we're going to also do, because we're pretty much Azure based, we're going to use Azure Open AI, so it's all secured and kept within our organization, Simon. Cool. All right. Sounds good. So if someone was looking at that build versus buy, you're going to try and make your own model, but you don't have enough data, you don't have all the stuff, you don't have a load of GPUs knocking around to train it, and you just want to say, we're going to use the existing off-the-shelf Open AI model, you can yeah. still actually plug it into MLflow. Exactly. Yeah. Ex I'm going to show you exactly how we do that. So to do that, you need a couple of um, you need you need a couple of credentials up front before you call your model. And I looked at your video previously, Sai. So great video out there in terms of how you use secrets within Databricks. Mm -hmm. So all my secrets are stored within uh, Key Vault, which I'm pulling via Databricks secrets. And here is just a code showing what I'm doing and what I'm pulling down. And then what I'm going to do is to use um, I've got a couple of code in terms of comparing different models within uh, OpenAI, namely the GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4. So I've written a bit of functionality to do just that. And uh, it's, it's a few tweaks right to your how if you've been using MLflow, it's just a couple of updates in terms of how you'd incorporate the new functionality. Mainly, if you're looking to log models, you'd use the MLflow OpenAI log model functionality. And there you'd have your definitions in terms of, okay, what model am I going to be uh, logging? What engine? What's the task type? And then you're going to save the model into an artifact path and the message as well. So all that is within my code snippet here. All right, very, very cool. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I've set that as a functionality, right? And what I've done here is I've got a couple of prompts. Again, I've been playing with different prompts. And I've got example questions here. So what I'm asking MLflow to, do, uh, MLflow to do here is using those questions and using those two models, evaluate which is the best model for me. So that's what I'm doing here. So I've specified here your GPT 3.5 turbo. And scrolling down, I've got GPT 4. So what's cool is once, once this runs, it logs all our runs into experiments. Like we've, if we've used MLflow previously, it's the exact same thing. And you can go over to the experiment runs, and this is what we get now. So there's a brand new feature here. And for me, it's called evaluation and preview. And when you click on that, it shows you, right, what you've done here. So it shows you the questions that you have asked, and it shows you the evaluation from your different models as well. Now, this is pretty handy. So in the past, if we were doing it without the MLflow integration, it comes down to just remembering, oh, I think that's what it said before. I'm not yeah. really sure. So this, it gives you kind of like, this is what you've asked for previously, as opposed to as, you know, compared to a GPT-4 model, these are the results. Okay. So if you were coming from traditional MLOps, you yep. maybe you'd have the same scoring data. And if you're trying different models, you'd pass it the same scoring data. And then you'd measure the accuracy of this model against that training data had this accuracy, this different model had this accuracy. And essentially that set of prompts is, ask, is acting as our training data that anytime we bring in a new model, we can evaluate it by sending those same prompts to it and then tracking the response. And then we get a big old matrix of across our four different prompts that we had, here's how our different models Yep. Work. Yep, exactly. Right. So cool. when I was playing with this earlier, I, uh, I had asked GPT-3, who's Simon Whiteley? In advancing analytics, and it didn't really know. It says I do not have access to personal information. And then I asked GPT-4, "Hey, who is Simon Whiteley who works in advancing analytics?" And I got a pretty accurate answer. So here you go. Here's the output. What would you say to that, Ed? Well, I just need to adjust our screen slightly. Can you scroll across just so we can see both of the models? The of answers. Course. Here we go. So you can see it here. There we go. Okay, so getting out different responses from different models and being able to have a look at how that works. I do promise everyone we do use LLMs for more than just asking who I am. <laughs> Even that is most of our examples. <laughs> but yeah, really yeah. useful just to get that comparison of one model going, no, that's not in my training data. I don't know who that is. I don't know what I can do with that. Another model saying, yep, yeah, here's my response. And so it'll be the idea of between saying, do you get a no answer compared to an answer? Or do you get an answer that has some hallucinations in, and this answer is actually more articulate, more more accurate, less hallucinations, etc.? 
Yeah, and also if you are trying to evaluate these large language models from the point of is there any profanity, this will be the place for you to say, well, I don't think I'm going to go with model one because of this, this and this. I'm going to go with a different model. So it is, like I said, a, a great way in terms of just analyzing the outputs of your large language models. So would you always also use this in, in terms of if, if you had the same model and you're testing the outcomes of some prompt engineering and you're trying different versions of prompts, different lang, lang chain templates, you're passing into it, you can yep. pass those different variants and then just log those responses. But you get a linear line to compare rather than comparing different models, right? Absolutely, right? You keep track of all your inputs, all your prompt stuff that you've done, and you can think, well, looking at all my outputs, I want prompt number 53 because that's given me what I intended to achieve from a large language model, so what I'm really expecting from a large language model. Cool. Really, really good. I mean, what? essentially, it's not doing anything crazy, right? It's just no. keeping track of the responses. But it's exactly. just giving you a common framework for doing it, a framework for comparing different models, just yeah. a common place and a common process to put around it. Absolutely, yeah. So there's, there's a question and answer scenario here that we are kind of demonstrating, but there's also um, a summarization um, use case that you can also apply the same sort of thing that what we've done and use ML4 Evaluate to get uh, an evaluation in terms of how well has it done in terms of uh, an article that I've asked GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 to summarize, how well has it's done? If you've got some ground truth data, so if you've got some proper outputs that you're expecting your large language models to produce, then you can also do a comparison between, okay, this is what I'm expecting. How close are my outputs to what I'm expecting? And you can really start to evaluate the models that you are intending to implement. All right. Really good. So actually everything gets stored in, in the same way, even if there's different use cases, even if there's different kind of uh, scenarios you're using, you've got a common way of thinking about measuring uh, and evaluating models. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And as soon as soon as you know you figure out, okay, I want I would like to go ahead with the GPT four model, just because I like the sound of it. It's not it doesn't have any kind of hallucination, um, it's no profanity. Uh, it's the same way as what we do with traditional machine learning when it comes to scoring. Uh, and that's in the bottom down here. Um, let's scroll down. You can even actually put up the uh, parameters and the questions here on, uh, on your notebook. But then you can go on to predict new questions based on that model that you're pulling down from the MLflow registry. Awesome. Yeah, it looks really, really useful. I mean, so what, are, what do people need to do to get started with it? How do people actually start on this journey of picking up using it? So they need the right data rich runtime. Anything else people need to, to do before they can start? No, I think the MLflow uh, resources are pretty good. They've got a couple of examples in the GitHub pages as well. I suggest having a look at that. And that's certainly what I use as a starting point in terms of playing with it. Um, and yeah, that's a, that's, that's a perfect starting point. Cool. All right. Well, I'll put those links down in the description. So yeah. everyone, if you're looking at using, even if you're using OpenAI, if you're looking at you know, essentially just plugging straight into these existing models, you should still be checking if it's the right model that you want to use. And you can do that by plugging it into the new version of MLflow, uh, exactly as we've shown you, and go from there. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for showing us that. We'll drag you back to take us deeper into the world of uh, LLMs very, very soon. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sai. No worries. Thank you very much. All righty. So, Again, I'll put links down below so you can check out the announcement about uh, MLflow 2.4, about those GitHub pages so you can get some of those examples notebooks and start working with it and start trying it out. But yeah, absolutely. If you are currently using it and you're in Azure and you're using OpenAI, you're plugging into it, actually wherever you are really, if you have anything which is a hosted large language model that is expecting prompts, you can do the same thing and plug it in and start using it to measure and evaluate. Is that the right model for you? Does the behavior change over time? We've seen loads of things recently about people actually looking at, is it getting less accurate as we see evolutions of models? Does it answer questions differently? Is it specializing in different areas? And if you want to keep track of that as you're using services that are changing and releasing new models, you can do it now if you set up this framework and the prompts you're expecting and keep tracking it. So definitely, if you're in the world of LLMs and you want to actually have some control and structure around it, start thinking about how you evaluate it Start thinking about what your test prompts are. Try it out because it's super easy to set up. A couple of lines of code and you can start actually measuring and tracking and having some control over the large language models that you're using.
All right, that is all for today. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, we'll be back soon digging into further other areas. Cheers.